please rise and face the entrance. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. Dear brethren, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. To the end we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, of his passion and resurrection, who was to accomplish this mystery they entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may also have a share in his resurrection and his life. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus proceeded on his journey up to Jerusalem as he drew near to Bethphage and Bethany at the place called the Mount of Olives. He sent two of his disciples. He said, go into the village opposite you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. And if anyone should ask you, why are you untying it? You will answer, the master has need of it. So those who had been sent off went and found everything just as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owner said to them, why are you untying this colt? They answered, the master has need of it. So they brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks over the colt, and helped Jesus to mount. As he rode along, the people were spreading their cloaks on the road. And now as he was approaching the slope of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to praise God aloud with joy for all the mighty deeds they had seen. They proclaim, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He said in reply, I tell you, if they keep silent, the stones will cry out. The Gospel of the Lord. Your brethren, like the crowds who acclaimed Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace. Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross. Graciously grant 
that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering, and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
But woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to debate among themselves who among them would do such a deed. Then an argument broke out among them about which of them should be regarded as the greatest. He said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are addressed as benefactors. But among you it shall not be so. Rather, let the greatest among you be as the youngest, and the leader as the servant. For who is greater, the one seated at table or the one who serves? Is it not the one seated at table? I am among you is the one who serves. It is you who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer a kingdom on you, just as my father has conferred one on me, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat, but I have prayed that your own faith may not fail, and once you have turned back, you must strengthen your brothers. He said to him, Lord, I am prepared to go to prison and die with you. But he replied, I tell you, Peter, before the cock crows this day, you will deny three times that you know me. He said to them, When I sent you forth without a money bag or a sack or sandals, were you in need of anything? No. no. They replied, He said to them, but now one who has a money bag should take it, and likewise a sack. And one who does not have a sword should sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you that this scripture must be fulfilled in me. Namely, he was counted among the wicked. And indeed, what is written about me is coming to fulfillment. Then they said, Lord, 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 then going out, he went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he arrived at the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not undergo the test. After withdrawing about a stone's throw from them, and kneeling, he prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, take this cup away from me. Still, not my will, but yours be done. And to strengthen him, an angel from heaven appeared to him. He was in such agony, and he prayed so fervently that his sweat became like drops of blood falling on the ground. When he rose from prayer and returned to his disciples, he found them sleeping from grief. He said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not undergo the test. While he was still speaking, the crowd approached, and in front was one of the twelve, a man named Judas. He went up to Jesus to kiss him. Jesus said to him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? His disciples realized what was about to happen, and they asked, Lord, Lord shall we strike with a sword? And one of them struck the high priest's servant, who cut off his right ear. But Jesus said in reply, Stop, no more of this. Then he touched the servant's ear and healed him. And Jesus said, and Jesus said to the chief priests and temple guards and elders who had come for him, have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs? Day after day I was with you in the temple area, and you did not seize me. But this is your hour, the time for the power of darkness. After arresting, arresting him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter was following at a distance. They lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat around him. And Peter sat down with them. When a maid saw him seated in the light, she looked intently, intently at him and said, Jesus was with him, but he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A short while later, someone else saw him and said, You two are one of them. But Peter answered, My friend, I am not. About an hour later, still another insisted, Surely this man too was with him, for he also is a Galilean. My friend, I do not know what you are talking about. Just as he was saying this, the cock crowed, and the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. 
the men who held Jesus in custody were ridiculing and beating him. They blindfolded him and questioned him, saying, who is it that struck you? They reviled him and saying many other things against him. When day came, the council of elders of the people met, both chief priests and scribes, and they brought him before their Sanhedrin. They said, If you are the Christ, tell us. But he replied to them, If I tell you, you will not believe, and if I question, you will not respond. But from this time on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. They all asked, Are you the Son of God? He replied to them, you say that I am. Then they said, What further need have we for testimony? He we have heard it from his own mouth. Then the whole assembly of them arose and brought him before Pilate. They brought charges against him, saying, He was his hands to our people. He opposes the payment of taxes to Caesar and maintains that he is the Christ king. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. Pilate then addressed the chief priests and the crowds. I find this man not guilty. But they were adamant and said, He is inciting the people with his teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee where he began even to hear. On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean. And upon learning that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was in Jerusalem at that time. Herod was very glad to see Jesus. He had been wanting to see him for a long time. For he had heard about him, and had been hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him in length, but he gave him no answer. The chief priest and the scribes, meanwhile, stood by accusing him harshly. Herod and his soldiers treated him contemptuously, and mocking him, and mocked him. And after clothing him in resplendent guard, he sent him back to Pilate. Herod and Pilate became friends that very day, even though they had been enemies formerly. Pilate then summoned the chief priests, the rulers, and the people, and said to them, You brought this man to me and accused him of inciting the people to revolt. I have conducted my investigation in your presence, and have not found this man guilty of the charges you have brought against him, nor did Herod, for he sent him back to us. So no capital crime has been committed by him. Therefore, I shall have to flog and then witness. But all together they shouted out, Away with this man, release Barabbas to us. Now, Barabbas had been in prison for a rebellion that had taken place in the city and for murder. Again, Pilate addressed them, still wishing to release Jesus. But they continued their shouting, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate addressed them a third time. What evil has this man done? I found him guilty of no capital crime. Therefore, I shall have him flogged and released. With loud shouts, however, they persisted in calling for his crucifixion, and their voices prevailed. The verdict of Pilate was that their demand should be granted. So he released the man who had been in prison for rebellion and murder, for whom they asked, and he handed Jesus over to them deal with as they wish. As they led him away, they took hold of a certain Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country. And after laying the cross on him, they made him carry it behind Jesus. A large crowd of people followed Jesus, including many women who mourned and lamented him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep instead for yourselves and for your children. For indeed, the days are coming when people will say, Blessed are the barren, the wombs that never bore, the breasts that never nursed. At that time, people will say to the mountains, Fall upon us, and to the hills, cover us. For if these things are done when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Now two others, both criminals, were led away with them to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him and the criminals there, one on his right, the other on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. They divided his garments by casting lots. The people stood by and watched. The rulers, meanwhile, sneered at him and said, Even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Above him there was an inscription that read, This is the king of the Jews. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not 
uh, Christ, save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuking him, said in reply, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, we have been condemned justly. <clears throat> For the sentence that we have received corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, because of an, e because of an eclipse of the sun. Then the veil of the temple was torn down the middle. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. Beyond doubt. And all the people who had gathered for this spectacle saw what had happened. They returned home beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances stood at a distance, including the women who had followed him from Galilee and saw these events. Now there is a virtuous and righteous man named Joseph, who, though he was a member of the council, had not consented to their plan of action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea and was awaiting the kingdom of God. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. After he had taken down the body down, he wrapped it in a linen cloth and laid him in a rock-hewn tomb in which no one had yet been buried. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come from Galilee with him followed behind. And when they had seen the tomb and the way in which his body was laid in they returned to prepare spices and perfumed oils. Then they rested on the Sabbath according to the command. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Pittsburgh at West Penn Hospital, 
took care of some of these individuals. She saw it. So imagine what's going on. Here I poor Lord, who is true God, who became true man, who entered this world to bring us back into God's love, to offer that sacrifice for sin, truly understands what he is facing. So yes, there's a chalice that's presented to him. And Jesus looks at that and he knows, this is the whole will of the Father for which I've been sent. This is my mission. I have to drink from it. Now what's he going to drink? He's going to take on himself all of the sins. All the sins from past, his time, the future. Your sins, my sins, sins that are venial little sins, sins that are the worst mortal sins, like the atrocities we see in Ukraine right now. He takes the burden of that sin onto himself. And he's going to offer the sacrifice of forgiveness. We have to remember, too, that in his humanity, he does understand what crucifixion is. He's going to feel all the pain of that awful, worst Roman kind of torture for capital punishment. He also understands the sins that are purposely directed toward him. The cowardice of Pilate who unjustly condemned him, the scheme, scheming, lying, manipulation of the Jewish elders, the fickleness of the crowds that on today said, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, and then on Good Friday, turn their backs and say, crucify him, crucify him. Or the denial of a Peter, the betrayal of a Judas, all those sins against him. Yet our Lord drinks of that chalice to do the will of the Father, to offer the sacrifice. From the cross, we hear his last words, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. What a beautiful expression of love. That Jesus, taking on those sins, all of those sins, expresses the love of the Father, which he has been sent to perfectly reveal. Because of this, the good thief, St. Dismas, will say, Jesus, remember me. And the centurion will say, truly, this is an innocent man. This is the Son of God. So the Gentile centurion, who we will know as St. Longinus, even recognizes Jesus. So my brothers and sisters, the challenge for us is, we have to remember Jesus this week in a very intense way. It is up to us to truly say this is the Son of God who suffered, died, and rose for my salvation. This is Jesus who is the way, the truth, and the life. Therefore, make Holy Week holy. Take time for our Lord. Remember Him each day. It's time to maybe make a retreat. Retreat from all the social media stuff. Try to eliminate much of the cell phone, the internet, the television. And focus this week on faith, on our Lord. So therefore, definitely take time to pray. Especially then, take time to come to the special services this week. On Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and then, of course, on Easter Sunday. But then, too, take the time, if you haven't done so yet, to make a good confession. Jesus came to forgive our sins. Are we going to say, I don't need that forgiveness? No matter how long it's been, if you haven't taken time this Lent, go to confession. And then, also, just take the time to read through sacred scripture, maybe the different passion accounts. And lastly, think about praying especially for someone who's gone astray, someone who doesn't practice. Maybe you know someone in your family, someone in the neighborhood. Maybe you can invite them back. Say, why don't you come back to church? Now's the time to rise again to a new life. 
So my brothers and sisters, we begin holy week. The key is, make it holy. May God bless you. Let us stand now and profess our faith. I believe in one God, God Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, because of not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us sin, for our salvation, he came down there from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was the heart of the Virgin Mary, and he came to him. For our sake, he was crucified under the conscious pilot. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and the Lord of who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism with the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear Lord Jesus, you said that where two or more are gathered in your name, that you be in their midst and hear their prayers. With this conference, we offer these petitions. For all of our church leaders, especially Pope Francis, Bishop Burbage, and all our parish priests, that they will preach the gospel with courage and conviction. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, that together we will promote the common good of all, safeguard the sanctity of marriage and the family, and defend the rights to life and to religious freedom. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For justice, security, and peace among nations, and for those who serve in our law enforcement, military, intelligence, and diplomatic services to make peace. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the end of war in Ukraine, the withdrawal of Russia, and the restoration of justice and peace. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For Christians who face persecution and genocide, especially in communist and Islamic countries, and the Holy Spirit will, will keep them strong in the faith, and for all non-believers, that the Holy Spirit will move them to faith and our divine Savior. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, 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 hear our prayer. For each of us, that during Holy Week, we will be transfigured in grace through prayer, penance, and good works. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, 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 hear our prayer. For those who have left the church, stop attending Mass or abandon the faith, that they will be moved to reconciliation. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, 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 hear our prayer. For those preparing to enter the church at Easter, and to receive the sacraments of baptism, confirmation, of, and the Holy Eucharist. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the safety of the construction workers and the success of our building project. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the acceptance of vocations to the priesthood and religious life, that young men and women from our own families who heed Christ's call and offer their lives to him, who gave his life for us, and for our parish seminarians, Tony Bennett, Mike Nugent, James Joseph, and Gabriel Gauthier, and for Anne Whelan and Caroline Jones, postulants with the National Dominicans. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and homebound and for our deceased, especially jo Joanne Kaplan, mother of Patrick Kaplan, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Angelina, Angela Marie the Liberani, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For our own personal intentions, which we offer in the quiet of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear all our prayers, even those 
prayers held within our hearts and who grant them in accord with thy divine will through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Calling upon the prayers of our blessed Mother, we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work with human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Jesus Christ, 
at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Graciously grant peace to our days, by 
your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. Lamb of God, take away the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God,
couple of announcements before we conclude mass. First of all, our four box collection is for the Red Cloud Sioux Indian School, that is on the Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota. Secondly, please do take home a copy of the bulletin. Since it's Holy Week, there is a change in the schedule of events, so please do take home a copy. Also, Wednesday evening, we'll have confessions beginning at 6.30 p.m. So all four priests will be there, so we'll stay as long as it takes, but we're going to wait forever either. So <laughs> be there or be square. And then lastly, youth group will not be meeting this week because it is holy. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavens,